Hallelujah. You know, he said, he said, I will make your name great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you realize that you're not a small person. Eh? You're destined for great things, greatness, greatness, greatness. You're not going to disappear in oblivion. Hallelujah. There's something about you. He said, I will make you great. You see, that's what he told Abraham. And your Abraham said, and heirs according to the promise. Eh? So what he said to him, he's saying to you, eh? he said, I will make your name great. Hallelujah. Now that's the design of God eh? for your life. Greatness. That's what he has in mind. To make you great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you know where you're headed. Greatness, greatness, greatness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, empires result from great people. Eh? Hallelujah. Empires result from great men and women. Hallelujah. So you see, there's, there's an empire about to be born by you. Eh? You see, there is no empire in world history that you can think of and it was a construct of uh, merely corporate and institutional institutions. You see, there's, there's, uh, there's a debate that goes on in the world about uh, strong men, strong women versus institutions. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Strong institutions are built because of strong men and strong women. Eh? Great men and great women. Eh? So whereas there is a, a place for the administrative, the institutions, hallelujah, it is the design of God to make you great and bring out of you an empire that is great. You see, when you have merely institutions around the world, you will most likely have bureaucracies. Eh? But you won't have something that is definitely impacting and influencing the people. Something that is really being built that can be tracked and seen. Eh? So you see, the culture of the kingdom is diametrically opposed to the, that of the, of, of, of the secular world. Hallelujah. So God is intent, the intention of God, the mind of God is to build or to make strong men and women through whom he can produce something that is of impact, great impact to the world. And that person, it is you. It is yours truly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's something about you that the world is yet to see. Hallelujah. You're moving from glory to glory to glory to glory. Hallelujah. You see this thing that God does with you? It is so mis miraculous, so mysterious. The world has no say or need or about it. You see, the things that God does, the world has no say about them. Hallelujah. When you read Matthew chapter 2, when the wise men had gone on looking for Jesus, when he had been born, there's a way he says, he says, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, verse 2. 2 says, saying, where is he that is born king? Where is he that is born king? You see, a king is born one. He's not voted into power. Eh? Hallelujah! 
In other words, you do not need the accreditation or the discrediting of others to either be put into power or be removed from power. Hallelujah. You, you know, God does not consult to see how many people like you and those who don't like you to bring you into a position of power and favor and influence. Eh? You see, this is a question of he that is born king. And you see, Revelation chapter 1, verse 6 says, He has made us kings. After you're born again, you're born a king and priests and to our God. So there are things that the world has no say about them. Hallelujah. You see, there are people who look at us and they do not like the influence and the power and the authority that is given to us by God. But we are here. <laughs> Hallelujah. They have no say. They have no say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's how God does things. He makes you that. You're born that. Ready to inherit your throne. Just like that. Puts you into a, a place, a position of power and influence. And there's nothing anyone can say about it. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? And that question messed up Herod. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These things you're born into them. Eh? Born into them. People have no say about your destiny. People, there's no one who has a say. You're just going to start rising Find yourself into things. People have no say. You're born into these things. Eh? Born into power. Born into greatness. Hallelujah. So that is you. That is you. And the more you solidify that position, the more these nagging contradictions that come from people and issues and whatever forces they are, the more you will ignore them. Because when you came, you came. Eh? There's nothing anyone can say or do about that. You see, then you concentrate on how to cultivate that greatness, that power. Because that's the only thing that matters. Because it is that only which is solidly sure. Because it's from God. You see, when God has called a man or a woman, eh? that's it. That is it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you see insecurities fly out of the window. Eh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what God is doing for you, with you, through you. Hallelujah. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 32 I believe. Eh? He says, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. Verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms. Hallelujah. Now that means we are mandated to subdue kingdoms. Hallelujah. You know, if you just, if, if, if you just realized who we really are, all of these petty, petty issues eh, will fly out of the window. And you see, the devil wants you preoccupied with things that are petty. And you call to subdue kingdoms. And you're running around saying, oh, did you hear what they said about, that girl said about me? Can you imagine? I'm going to buy a better dress than her. She will see that I serve the God of Prophet Elvis, you see, a dress. <laughs> 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 
Hallelujah. You see, it subdued kingdoms, kingdoms, subduing kingdoms. Hallelujah. Subduing kingdoms. Now, this, ex- this, this, this means these kingdoms are actually in existence. These kingdoms that are to be subdued are actually in existence. And God expects us to subdue them. You see, when you read throughout the scriptures, you see a phenomenon that uh, can be referred to, to us as the double kingdom, eh? where you will see a spiritual kingdom that is exerting its influence upon the natural realm, eh? its influence and its power, and therefore the natural realm takes upon the mode of that spiritual kingdom. You'll find it in Daniel chapter 10 with the prince of Persia, you know. He was a spiritual entity. And then you'll find it in Ezekiel chapter 28, you know, with the king of Tyre and the prince of Tyre. You'll find it throughout, you know, where you find a spiritual kingdom exerting its influence upon the natural kingdom eh? or the natural realm. And so you see kingdoms around and they have their own character, their own virtues. You see, eh? their own traits, their own agenda and ambitions. All these things are, are seen in the natural realm. You see, that is why when you read the scriptures, you'll find that there's a time when the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Why? Because the kingdoms of this world must be, must be subdued. This, you see, this is what they refer to as the kingdoms of this world. Now, you'll either subdue these kingdoms or they will subdue you. You see, these kingdoms set the trends again. Eh? It may be financial trends. It may be the cultural trends. They determine how you live if you are held up inside their influence. Now, in other words, and they are territorial. In other words, you will find a scenario where, you remember when they told Jesus, you know, Jesus of Nazareth, when they were reporting about him, and then someone said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? You see? So, what we're talking about here is this a territory where Something has been exerted upon it. And you're not supposed to exceed or supersede a certain level. Now, in other words, it has been predetermined that everyone who is living in that locality, in that territory, sometimes it can actually be, it, 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 it goes, it reduces as small as a family unit. Then it builds as far as, you know, regional, national, you know, international, continental, and sometimes it's in it's in workplaces, the territorial authorities, kingdoms. Now, he says, can anything good come out of that? Because they know and they have seen these are people that have been subdued. Eh? Now, when you see the day, for instance, that we live in right now, eh, you will see people are speaking the same language, having the same complaints. You will praise his this. Things have gone up. Who you know, eh? They have been subdued. There's a spirit that is in operation. And it's intended to oppress and suppress financially. Now, you either be caught up in subjection under that spirit or you rise up and subdue it. Now, it can happen on an individual level where it's subduing others and for you it is not subduing you or what God has given to us where we turn the tides around eh? and we become saviors so to say like the prophecy says saviors shall arise from Mount Zion 
and we start turning the tide around them. And life becomes better and better nationally, internationally, because we are here. But now you see, if believers don't realize it, if Christians don't realize it, they will find themselves subjected to this because they don't know. They have not come to the knowledge of what actually is taking place. Eh? He said, through faith, subdued kingdoms. There's a kingdom that is invisible. There are kingdoms that are invisible that are exerting their influence and trends upon the human race. And it is up to us to awaken and subdue them instead. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Hallelujah. So these things happen. And they are unleashed as the devil wills. And then a pressure is exerted on those people. They are controlled and ruled by the decrees and the power and the influence that has come from these invisible realms. Eh? Hallelujah. And you see, again, they are in various spheres. You will find in certain places that they have gazetted that as long as you're a Christian, you can never go through it. But we saw the prophecy that has just come. Eh? It is shattering all that. I'm saying, I'm saying it was, it, it was meant for you. There are things that are going to break. You will find people where it has been, it had been designated as these are people of darkness, eh? And I'm telling you, it is so real. But because the world is so blind, there's a lot of things the world does not see. There are places. You see, these things offer positions, offer influences, of, in the economic realm, in the political realm, in every realm, academic realm, they offer these things. I'm telling you, and then, you see, they don't realize. <laughs> they have not realized that there's a breed that is about to break into that fold. And will shake and turn over. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. 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 Bondages are breaking. Let me tell you, all over the world, if you see the hierarchies of power in the world, and this transcend political, these political things are really small, eh? The hierarchies of power actually spiritual. There are men you do not know, you don't see, and are in direct communion with the prince that is over those territories. And these men, sometimes in the secular realm, sometimes these things come out, and you know, as shadow governments and stuff like this. But the things that are actually in control and they determine who rises up, who falls in every area. For as long as you are ready to do their bidding, you know, you're given the pass. But we are here, you see, eh? to subdue those things. In America, in most of the places of the world, and, and some of them have organizations that have a physical structure eh? that may be secretive, but it is physical and can be seen. Eh? We are presidents, you know, economic leaders, world leaders are determined and predetermined. Eh? And people go to school and everything is known. And if you see in the spirit, you will see a much broader and wider scope about what actually is taking place there. Now, the people here, because they are there waiting to be subdued, eh? they don't realize what is taking place in the background. Eh? So whatever I say, yeah, they have told us, they have told us, and they just run around with the trends. He said, who through faith subdued kingdoms? Now, in other words, turned around the trends. Are you serious with these things here? Eh? Hallelujah. So now you see, it happens on, on a larger scale and it can also happen on a lesser scale, eh? on an individual level. 
where you subdue things. I remember when I just got born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, the morning after, something, I was attacked by something, something demonic that used to attack me throughout my lifetime. Eh? And, uh, you know, and some of you have heard these things, eh? you know, and you're sleeping and all of a sudden you wake up and you can't wake up. <laughs> you see, in the secular world, they can ignorantly pass it off as, a, you know, sleep paralysis, you see, eh? So, but I'm waking up and I'm not waking up and you're telling me I have sleep, you know. Eh? And sometimes you feel something moving on you and sometimes you get a glimpse of that thing. Eh? You know, and so frustrating. Someone walks in the bedroom and you see them say, wake me up, man. Eh? You see? Eh? <laughs> so this thing used to oppress me. Eh? So the morning after I was born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, I woke up and the thing was on me. <laughs> so I realized things had become new. Eh? So I said, Jesus. And the thing shook. Something literally trembled. Brr on me, I could feel it. Brr. Then I said, Jesus. And the thing, like a suction pump, eh? Just lifted off of me, and I could see in a distance, not very far distance in the room, but like in a distance, the thing going in a tunnel. It was misty, grayish, darkish, and it was going. And that was the end of it. Eh? That was the end of sleep paralysis, according to psychologists. Eh? I dealt with it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. So, on an individual level, I had subdued sleep paralysis. Because <laughs> it was raining over me. And then, days later, weeks later, years later, I've had run-ins. Run-ins. A lot of run-ins. With powers and authorities that I have subdued one at a time, one at a time, now I'm a result, I'm a product of subduing authorities and powers and kingdoms. I am here. Hallelujah. So the things I can confidently say, that one is under my feet. Hallelujah. He said, who through faith subdued, subdued kingdoms, Again, you either subdue or you subdue. Eh? Acts 19, let's go through Acts 19, verse 8. Eh? It says, And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for the space of three months. This is Paul, the apostle. Eh? Disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. So here it was a kingdom thing, eh? He wanted to showcase authority. He had not just come eh, to me and speak and you will see. Eh? He had come to showcase something. Eh? The things concerning the kingdom of God. That was his revelation. And that was his intention. That was his purpose. The things concerning the kingdom of God. Verse 8, verse 9. But when divers were hardened and believed not, this is after three months, <laughs> but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. Verse 10. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia had the word of the Lord, Jesus both Jews and Greeks, verse 11. And God wrote special miracles by the hands of Paul. Verse 12. Mark that. He wrote special miracles. Eh? So that from this, from his body were brought unto the sick, handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. 
This was things concerning the kingdom of God. Eh? Verse 13. Then Satan of the vagabond Jews, exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Elvis preaches. And there were seven sons of one scaver, a Jew and a chief of the priests, which did so. Now notice what happens. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Elvis I know. What about you, Adrian? And Paul I know, but who are you? Eh? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on, eh, was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them. You want to subdue us? Who are you? <laughs> Instead, let us subdue you. Eh? This came and jumped and leaped on them. Eh? You know, there are Christians who sometimes don't understand the mystery, even in the past, who have not understood the mystery of subduing because it takes a grace. And that grace, the Spirit of God, is, his intention is to reveal it and impart it today. So there are Christians in the past who have had the concept of actually taking over places, taking over territories. And once they have gone there, and they have been well-intentioned, but on arriving there, they eventually you see them and they look like the place which they went to take over. Eh? And they are subdued, they are taken over. And then they start fighting now the Christians. Eh? <laughs> and they start making laws and policies, you know, against the church and against the children of God. They have been taken over, they have been subdued. Eh? And they're talking about Christians who were born again, saved. And it has happened. And we have seen it especially in the past two years. Eh? Anyway, it says, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Eh? <laughs> Verse 17. Eh? And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus and fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Why? Because they realized that these things are not a gamble. There's a distinction with the name of the Lord Jesus. Those who are in the kingdom, in other words, you just cannot mimic it. So they realize, eh, so these things here, you just don't overcome them like that. It was the witness of the overcoming of these fake guys that actually brought fear upon the whole of Ephesus eh? and the realization that the kingdom of God indeed is the supreme kingdom. Now you wait and see in those places that have seemed impenetrable, where high walls have been exalted, and it has appeared that only dark men have possession of. You wait and see when the shaking happens, and you see the remnant of God have going and with ease taking possession, taking possession, and they're in these places. And then all of a sudden, fear falls upon it. Eh! We thought this, this was some area. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Mm. See, and this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks also. Dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on, on them all, and the name of the Lord was magnified. Verse 18. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. So you see now, eh? Ephesus, something has just started. Something has just started there now. Since they came and confessed their deeds. Now, no, notice verse 19. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. This is the things that they used to use. They realized 
this is great. And they started burning them, burning them, burning them. They had been subdued. You see, <laughs> many times when people have talked of a revival, eh? they have talked about things that have happened within the confines of a congregation. Eh? And people are slain and they don't wake up after three days. But when they wake up, the prince of darkness is still controlling the territory they are in. Eh? That is a mystery. <laughs> I'm telling you that the thing that God is intentionally revealing to us, it is for the subduing of kingdoms. Eh? It's not for the church to be along that side and okay, let the affairs of the world run. Eh? No, 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 no. That's not why we are here. Until they start to say, okay, now we realize this book does not work, okay, have, burn it. We realize this program does not work, okay, have, burn it. Until they come and they realize that all their things don't work and the name of the Lord is magnified, then shall we know that the process has begun. Hallelujah. So, you see, we are tearless until we see the effect of these things. Many of them also which used curious had brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted all the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Hallelujah. He says it prevailed, subdued. What was it? The word of God. But this was more. What was taking place here? The influence of it was much more than come, let's talk about the history of David. Now David came from Jesse. Jesse came from let us read verse by verse chapter by chapter until you're all enlightened about the Bible. Those things, they will stoop there in that car room. They don't turn over kingdoms. It was more than that. You remember? You remember Apollos? Acts chapter 18. Let's first go there. I want to show you that the things that take more than a debate and an ex exposition of the word, what you call the word. Eh? Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem means the house of all those things. Eh? Those things don't, don't turn over kingdoms. You can have a good expositor theological exposure of those things and still the thing remains there. And we say, oh! So how many years did the Jews remain in? Okay! For me, I always thought that it was 30 years. Eh? Thank you for enlightening me. <laughs> you think the devil will hear that and he will say, okay, now we have given over curious arts and you know... Hallelujah. So, you see, and a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. The same place, you remember. Eh? This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in spirit, yet the zeal, eh? he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. Knowing only the dipping baptism water only. But this guy was very eloquent, very learned as far as the things of the, you know, the written scriptures were. But you knowing only the baptism of John. Eh? Now notice verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when 
two remnants, so Aquila and Priscilla had had, they took unto him. They took him unto them. They said, no, first come, said, you're doing a good job, but there's something that is, we can see something missing. Eh? And expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. 27. And when he was disposed to pass in, uh, in, uh, into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much, uh, which had believed through grace. Verse 28. For he mightily, now after, eh, convinced the Jews, and that publicly showing by them the scripture that Jesus was the Christ. Eh? The, the gist is here. Eh? This guy, so eloquent, so mighty in the scriptures, yet lacking, knowing only the gospel of John, he needed another dimension called the baptism in the spirit. Eh? He needed something that was spiritual. Now to start the actual transforming work. Eh? And all of these things here don't go by mere exposition. Eh? There's going to be a backing of extra power, spiritual power. Not debates. You know, you can debate a guy, debate him flat, hands down, you know, flat, and he looks at you and can't say any other word. But he's not converted. He eh? says, okay, yeah, I agree, okay, you go your way, I also go my way, you see. But you've won the debate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you to subdue kingdoms, for you to subdue that spirit that is contrary, it takes more than a debate. And that is why even on a personal level, even on a personal level, unfortunately today, you will find a lot have been educated by the secular system. Eh? And so you'll find a couple, eh? the man and the woman. The woman will debate about her rights as a woman. Eh? But basing it on secular feminism, eh? And the woman, the man, sorry, will debate wanting to, you know, having his place as a man in this thing. Using chauvinism. And the two will clash. But they will have all these debates. Eh? For me, I believe, and it will be a debate after another. Now, if they do not realize that in order to subdue this thing that is actually controlling them, which is really the prince of darkness, eh? the kingdom of darkness, that the woman has to arrive to that place that God recognizes as a woman, eh? and the man has to arrive to that place that God recognizes as a man. Not, not the woman whom you have been shown in the mirror or through the mirror of feminists, eh? or not the man through whom you have been shown through a mirror of Secularists, you see, eh? not that one. But you take your position. They are as that woman whom God recognizes, and now this is a woman. Eh? Then all of a sudden, the man is calm. You've won him over. And the same applies this side. Eh? You can try this chauvinistic, muchiga style. Eh? And this woman is in rebellion. Eh? And what? I so, me, I'm a man, you see. Eh? And it doesn't work because you're dealing with the spirit that is actually controlling the trends. Eh? And much of what people learn these days, it is through the prince of the power of the air, the devil, and he's setting these trends up. And they think that they've got actually the perfect picture of the man and the woman. And it's in deception, it's, in sub, it's been subjected to the prince who's controlling that territory. And he has extended not only through secular arts and entertainments, but it has extended also in uh, 
you know, marriage conferences in the church. Eh? Let me tell you, today I will not go there, eh? but I'm telling you that there are things. So you want me to become a my uh, You see, eh? I'm telling you eh? that there are things that are actually taken for, you know, as this is the right thing, this is the way, and it is not coming from God. Eh? And But guys have been subdued. Ladies have been subdued. And they think that is how it actually ought to be. So much so that God can no longer recognize that this is a man and this is the woman eh? in that setting. And they don't realize that just that, eh? just that, of just getting themselves in that setting, just works out things. Just works out things. It's just something that is supernatural. Let me forgive you today, eh? but you see, eh? <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So you think that the perfect man is one who has just come and opened the door for you to enter? Or who will bring flowers? Okay, okay, let me leave you there. Let me just leave you there. So who told you some of these things? Eh? Okay. But you see, that aspect of life is known and accepted and it's actually taught in the church and oh he's nice oh she's nice and this is a, a this is a clony of a certain spirit and so when God looks down he's wondering you know where is the man where is the woman eh? Hallelujah. 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 Let's move away from that very fast, very fast. Eh? Let's go into the things that are supernatural. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Me, I'm telling you, I'm telling you that if you found the setting of God, eh, that's all it takes. You remember the scripture that talks about Sarah who found that setting? And then all of a sudden, and when, you know, the example is being given by the Holy Spirit, it says even an unbelieving man would actually, he, he would be knocked out if you found that setting. Eh? Now what, would, what do the feminists tell you? Go teach them this. Know your rights. Anyway, let me just leave that part, eh? you see? Eh? These things are supernatural. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, it's not the way it has been made to look like. Eh? There's a way that is of the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's how you get, that's how you get to subdue all these things that have been planted by the enemy when you find the way of the Lord. And they subdued and a new culture that comes from above is actually enhanced. And you see some of these things seem appealing Oh, let's take a selfie. He brought for me flowers. Oh, you see? Eh? Very appealing, eh? But you see, there's a way that goes deeper. And, there's, and you find that there's, there's an emptiness. There's a way that actually reaches the heart and strikes the depth of that unfulfilling, you know, that desire. Eh? And that only can be reached that way, that, that depth of satisfaction can only be reached when you do it in the Lord's way. When you do all these things, it will be for social media and so. But you will know that something is missing. 
Okay, 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 okay. okay. How have we gotten here? Let's talk about the mighty miracles. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 He said, subdued kingdoms. Eh? Hallelujah. Now, I didn't ask them to put up this scripture. Eh? Let's just go into something else. But where were we, by the way? <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're talking about subduing these kingdoms. Eh? Subdued kingdoms. There are things that exert their influence and Christians find themselves caught up in these trends and they have not deciphered them. So they go along and they are subdued and they think they are enlightened but they are actually subdued by the prince of darkness. Eh? Let me tell you, when that veil opens, eh, you will see some people are actually so convinced that no, this, when the veil opens, you will see. And then, when you find out that which is actually from above, <laughs> the freedom, the satisfaction, the fulfillment that comes with it, and the dispelling of, you see, these things here come with Ebigen de la Koe. They come attached to, there are some things attached to them. Everything that the enemy gives, which seems good eh, and appealing, it has something that is attached to it. Eh? And so you have the devil in you. And then you will begin finding these things that, you know, are in your lives. And you don't know how you brought them upon you. This is the devil subduing people. Hallelujah. But let's leave that part again. Eh? Who through faith? Subdued kingdoms. Hallelujah! 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 Maybe we should have a week on just that one. Yeah? Hallelujah! 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 Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. It says, But if I cast out devils, by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Hallelujah. He said, if I cast out devils, cast them out, then you know that the kingdom of God has come upon you. In other words, I'm dispelling the activity of darkness. Then you know that the kingdom of God, there's another kingdom that has come to take over, to subdue. And there's all these places, all these kingdoms that we need to subdue. Because they are dictating every other thing. Finances, what you see, eh? before long, actually not long from now, eh? I mean, let me not give God there. Eh? That's a prophetic secret. Eh? But I'm telling you, All these things need to be subdued. They don't, we don't need to leave it in the enemy's hands to determine finances, our financial policies, our economies, marriages, relationships. The church even gave up worship to the devil and he told them when to worship and when not to worship. A couple of years, two years ago, we saw this. You see, eh? All these things in the hands of the devil. You just wake up and they have set up something and it's squeezing you. And you see, and you still do not see the desire, you don't have the urge and the desire and the passion to take over all these places because they squeeze. The devil comes to steal. He comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. He says, I've come that you might have life and life in its fullness. So whenever something of the enemy is being implemented, it comes to take away. To destroy and it has infringed upon even the people of God because all these things have been left to be run by the prince of darkness eh? he said who through faith subdued kingdoms we want to see you a couple of months from now a year from now when you have taken over a certain area and we know at least we have you there 
And we know peace has come, liberty has come in that area. You have subdued that area. He said, if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God. Now, in other words, if I show up and the devil flees, leaves that territory, then you know that the kingdom of God has come upon you. Because, you see, the way people saw it, they thought it is casting out devils on an individual level. Eh? But now you see, what happened is, what they are doing is casting out devils among us and within themselves. Eh? The children of God. This is what happens. That's how devils are cast out. Eh? And the territory outside remains in the hands of the wicked one. And the casting out of devils in other words, someone shows up and says, okay, now let me cast devils out to show that the kingdom has come. Eh? But uh, there's a devil outside that is running rampant. Eh? And inside for you, you're just casting out devils from the children of light. Eh? And you see how ridiculous that sounds. Eh? But that's how the church has been for all these generations. Eh? But, you know, there's something different that the Spirit of God is introducing. Eh? How about if we show up and the devil flees. Then you know that the kingdom of God has come upon you. Eh? You know, there are places that I've seen that are left alone, for instance, as uh, haunted houses. Eh? And there are haunted houses around Kampala. And no one has been in those places for all decades. I can take you on a tour and I show you some person showed me. And I'll show you this one. It is empty. No one dares go in. And they are cheap, but no one can buy them. Who goes into a haunted house? Leave it alone for the devil. Eh? How about if you went and took over it and the devil flees? Eh? You know, there are territories where, you know, then you know that the kingdom has come. Do you really know the history of Zoe Grounds? Eh? Here. When we show up, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! When we show up, the devil flees. Eh? Then you know that the kingdom of God has come upon you. Hallelujah! This is what we are talking about. How about showing up there where you are? And that devil that has been trying to control people, eh? no more. He flees and the territory begins changing. And, those who, and whoever wants to hang on to that spirit goes with it. And things change. They can change in workplaces, in homes, in families, like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come upon you. You've subdued. One more scripture because you're hungry now. Eh? Daniel chapter 2, verse 34. Thou sowest, sowest still, that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet, that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Verse 35. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor. And, and he carried with them away, that no place was found for them. And the, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain. Hallelujah. And filled the whole earth. Now when you read further, it talks about how he will establish, listen chapter, a kingdom on this earth that will destroy all these other kingdoms 
And this kingdom will have no end. It will be an everlasting kingdom. But how or what is the operation of effecting this? It says the stone came and smashed, floored all these other empires and kingdoms. Subdued them, destroyed them, and took over. Now when God sees what he is doing in you and through you, he's looking at something that is beginning. That's why he was saying, he was speaking about your greatness. Because he's saying, you subduing empires, subduing kingdoms that are before you. There's an empire of fashion that is about to be taken over. An empire of entertainment about to be taken over. Of economics, of real estate, taken over. And they are there waiting for you. Now you come along and these things are destroyed. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. You hold these. You start controlling them. You have subdued them. They listen to you. You. So you see, again, if the enemy manages to keep you along petty things and blinds you to the development of the greatness or from the development of the greatness that God is working in you, that is eventually going to work through you, what he expects you to take on. You know, he's looking at you and saying, you have to take on that empire, that media empire. You see, it has been brainwashing my people, but I'm, I'm calling you for it. And he's anointing you for it. But then, some people say, I oh, know there's CNN, uh, there's what? No! I'm telling you, you are being groomed. You're being groomed for these great, 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 great things. These things are supposed to be in the palms of your hands. You're supposed to call the shots. Hallelujah. Happening now at Zoe Grounds every Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. at 47 Chigolweza next to Akasha Lakeside Campus along the Entebbe Express Highway.